TV Boats presents Florida Sport Fishing. Television for the avid angler. Powered by Mercury Marine. Oh, yeah. On this episode of Florida Sport Fishing. There's one on right there, right there, right there. Keep it simple, do it right, and you'll catch more. Florida Sport Fishing TV proudly utilizes and endorses Spool Tech, Hyperlastics, Engage, and Ocean Born Lures. Stay connected with the next generation of innovative and effective soft and hard baits for every venue. Taco Marine, official outrigger system of Florida Sport Fishing TV. Salt Life Optics, anti glare Zeiss lenses provide unparalleled protection and polarization. Hey guys, welcome to Florida Sport Fishing TV. You know our goal with this show is really to educate anglers. That's really what my focus has been all along and continues to be. And today we're going to do just that. We're going to focus on work in the cockpit. We're out here trolling, we're focusing on dolphin, but it doesn't matter. You could be trolling for kingfish, for wahoo, for billfish up in the mid-Atlantic. The fundamentals are all the same. The guy working the cockpit is really the key player in the entire setup here. And one guy can do it. I'm gonna show you today how we fish eight rods, how I'm gonna work eight different lines. Uh, of course, along with Captain Carlos at the wheel and what his role is gonna be. And together, we're gonna to come out, we're gonna maximize our efforts here, really put together this trolling spread and try and hook up. We may catch some fish, we may not. I don't know that, but really, I don't care. I wanna just spend the time sharing all of the little details that are gonna help you become a more successful offshore angler. So first thing, you know, is preparation. Obviously, I'm well prepared. I've got all my rods ready to go. We found a little weed line right out here in about 600 feet, and we're gonna give this a whirl. So go ahead and push them up, Carlos. Now I'm gonna to start to set my spread, starting with a long shotgun bait. I'm always gonna set my long baits first and work my way back toward the boat. That's gonna be the key, is get those far baits out first. Boom, and that rod's done. Now what we're gonna do is set our long rigger bait. And this is just gonna be a small feather in this particular case. Little feather right there, mimics a small little dolphin or a colorful flyer. And again, because we're putting the long baits out first, we're gonna put this on the long clip on our taco riggers. Check that drag, always check in the drags, you can see, always, okay? Now I'm gonna slide over to the port side and do my port long. So as you can see, I already have two baits out. Get that clicker on, okay? Same thing on that long clip. Of course, I've checked the tension on the clip. You know, always do that as well. It's these little details, the little details that are gonna make a difference. You know, I say it in all my seminars and I'll say it again. One fish can make the difference of the entire trip. Okay. And now what we'll do is put out our mid bait. And here we've got a little bit bigger, a little flying fish imitation. Look at that, a ballyhoo rigged on fluorocarbon with that little chugger. And again, because I'm working the cockpit alone, I've got to really monitor everything that's going on. I'm on my own. The decisions that I make are going to dictate how the trip goes. Okay, check that drag again, good. Now let's get our mid bait out on this side. I'm excited already. You know, again, you gotta really take this seriously. You know, if you wanna be a consistently successful angler, it's not gonna come easy. You know, you've gotta spend a lot of time preparing, a lot of time fine tuning your approach and always being ready, but also being ready to modify and adapt to the current situation. Is there a chop? Is it flat calm? You know, if it's flat calm, I control faster. If it's a little choppy, I've gotta troll a little bit slower. Okay, now we'll put our flat line out right here. But before we do, we're gonna set a deep diving plug. Little bit of a heavier outfit, because of course we're putting a tremendous amount of strain on this outfit. Okay, so we're gonna always fish a bait deeper in the water column. So we'll get that out there. Okay, that's good to go. 
It's another set it and forget it rod. You just wait for that to go off. That deep diving, deep diving plug not only catches fish, but also acts as a teaser. And then finally, another bait. Clickers on. And I like to fish a couple relatively close to the boat. Don't be afraid to fish a couple close. I've got some baits way back there as well. But I'm also gonna fish a couple close. And of course we want a nice symmetrical even spread. I want my baits on both sides to be in the same position in that pattern because that's how fish swim. That's how bait fish swim, you know, in a nice pattern, real tight. So you really want it to look good. You want to, you know, really mimic that feeding scenario. Remember, the fish are not looking up and going, ooh, what a nice sea bee. They're looking up and they see a big dark shape shadow. That's, you're mimicking a bait ball. All of this white water right here is commotion. It's game fish it's zooming in and out of that bait, bait ball to feed. Right? That's what the, the scenario that you're trying to mimic is. And then, of course, your baits up on top are the weak, the wounded, okay? the easy catches. You know, Just like a lion is always going to go after that weak gazelle, the same kind of scenario out on the water. You've got to think about it like that. This is a fish eat fish world. Now that all my lines are set, Again, I'm going to look one more time. I'm going to make sure everything is even, symmetrical. Everything's where I want it to be. Now it's just a matter of time. The award-winning Z Performance line from CV raises the bar. It's not just fast. It's not just fuel efficient. The CVZ is the entire package. It offers the perfect balance, safe, predictable handling during hard turns and at high speed. And most importantly, the Z stays on plane at lower speed so it can comfortably handle anything Mother Nature can dish out. Experience the exhilarating ride of the CVZ. Schedule a sea trial today. When you're in command of a boat with Mercury 400 horsepower Verados, you might start to feel like you're someone that fish should fear, that the water should respect, and that the world should acknowledge. Until you realize you are all those things. The Mercury 400 horsepower Verado. Power, control, and speed in a lightweight package. Are you ready for a world-class adventure? Fishing up to 150 miles offshore and always on the hunt for untouched fisheries, the legendary 100-foot Yankee Caps is Florida's premier long-range headboat. Fish around the clock for trophy snapper, grouper, tilefish, tuna, and more. With all the comforts of home and plenty of elbow room, Captain Greg Mercurio and his dedicated crew will put you or your entire charter on a hot bike fishing the famed halfway ledge, Pulley Ridge and beyond. Rated number one in service, Yankee Cap sales from Key West year round. Another one on the jig. Ooh. That's Grouper Dynamo. Yeah! How's that for a sea monster? Chaos, gear matters. Shop online or visit our new superstore for everything fishing. You know, as I sit here and look across the transom, look across the cockpit here, and I'm paying close attention to all of my lines and waiting to react to a bite or to do whatever clear lines, you know, weed, whatever the case. I can't stress enough that it's not only the guy in the cockpit, you know, successful offshore trolling is a team effort. And the guy at the wheel is just as important as the guy working the pit, there's no question. And while I'm doing my job, you know, I'm counting on Carlos doing his job and whoever's at the helm of your boat. Carlos, I notice, you know, you're, you're running south and then I see you kind of head off to the east a little bit more and then southeast. What are you looking for? You know, what determines what direction you're trolling in? Yeah, we're just kind of jogging, um, trying to find different depths, you know, and pushing out a little bit deeper water, um, looking for slicks in the water and kind of how they line parallel to the coast or if they're, you know, perpendicular to the coast and I want to lay parallel to that, you know, so kind of work the edge of any slick, weeds, whatever I could find out here. So does it make sense, you know, for a guy who's just coming out here and trolling, and you know, he hears on the radio or at the local tackle shop, hey, the bite's been hot in 800 feet. 
should he come out to 800 feet and just troll straight up and down the coast in 800 feet or no you, you want to you recommend you, you want to zigzag do? you want to zigzag a little bit yeah you want to cover different depths because just because it was hot the other day you know the next day could be different you, you know? know even the conditions are similar but the fish could be keyed in on a maybe a different water temperature break or you know it could be something so small but it could be different so. absolutely excellent information you know thinking about what you just said that i can't stress enough and i want to reiterate the fish that were caught the other day they were already caught you know what i mean guys fish those reports and yeah it's a great place to start but like you said every day is different mm -hmm. and if the fish were in 800 feet yesterday does not mean they're going to be in 800 feet today they could be in 400 you know so zigzagging yeah. covering that water you know the different depths and trying to key in on those weed lines and slicks like you said and of course birds and debris you know so hey man it's all about putting in the time right and paying close attention and <laughs> that one trying not to fall off the boat right doing it. yeah that one got me rigging station brought to you by diamond fishing the finest monofilament fluorocarbon and braided fishing line so i'm captain mike captain carlos is at the wheel of our mercury powered cv we're offshore at Fort Lauderdale, trolling for dolphin, talking about working the cockpit. That's the focus of today's episode. One of the things that I'm responsible for working the deck here today is, of course, tackle selection. And this started long ago, you know, not at dawn this morning going, hey, what rods am I going to fish? A lot of preparation, a lot of thought went into this. So we're fishing an eight rod spread. I want to talk to you quickly about the tackle on our mid baits our mid outrigger baits we're fishing a combination of chuggers and ballyhoo almost these flying fish imitations a little bit heavy of a heavier bait i'm fishing it off a six foot stand-up rod with an alu technos 20 loaded with 30 pound high vis line okay that high vis line is finished off with a top shot a 40 pound diamond presentation fluorocarbon really stealthy still light enough to enjoy smaller fish but it's got some beef in the event you hook a bigger fish then you'll also see some longer rods these are seven foot rods rated for 15 to 30 pound line Daiwa saltiga 50 size reels on here with 20 pound diamond high vis line and that high vis line is ultra important when you're trolling multiple lines it allows me to track the entire spread and when there's one guy working eight rods in the cockpit, that makes a huge difference. This rod also has a top shot. As a matter of fact, all of them do. All of the high vis line, all of those reels have a top shot of clear presentation fluorocarbon. In this case, 20 pound mono, 30 pound leader. This is my long bait. Look where it is. It's in this position right here. Okay, my mid bait is further up in the gunnel. Okay, this is crucial so the lines don't cross off the riggers. My flat line, the same rod, I'm fishing small baits. They're little four inch feathers. Could easily fish them off this class of tackle. Most of the guys, or you know, I don't wanna say most, but I've certainly seen a lot of scenarios where people are fishing tackle that's too heavy. And that's gonna create an unnatural presentation on your baits and it's not gonna be that sporty. My deep diving plug, of course, is on a heavier outfit simply because of the strain, you know, the tension that's put on this rod. We're fishing a small deep diving plug about six inches, but I may switch that up and fish a large deep diving plug. So I need a, you know, a reel capable of doing that. In this case, Alu Technos 30, two speed. This way I can crank in that deep diving plug if I need to, to clear it from weed without having to slow down. Again, the high vis braid with a top shot of 80 pound diamond presentation, clear fluorocarbon. It's the same across the board. That's my responsibility as the guy working the deck to make sure that the tackle selection is proper and that everything is perfect, dialed in, and just ready for every bite. Fiberglass, they use it to build boats and yachts because of its strength and durability. And that's exactly what every frigid rigid cooler is made out of. This is my set after 12 years and I keep them outdoors with industrial grade rubber gasket and stainless steel hinges with backing plates. Not a single component has failed on any of them. Can you honestly say that about your coolers? From 35 to 300 quarts, there's a frigid rigid cooler, coffin box or freezer for every boat.
Boats get dirty, that's a fact. Thankfully, Rejuvenate Marine uses patented nanotechnology to make your boat cleaning faster and easier, literally cutting your cleaning time in half. Watch this. With highly concentrated biodegradable ingredients across their complete line of cleaning and care products, Rejuvenate Marine lasts longer while providing professional cleaning power that's safe for all surfaces and for the environment. Rejuvenate Marine spend more time fishing and less time cleaning. The complete line of Rejuvenate Marine cleaning and care products is now available at Boat Owners Warehouse. Visit your local superstore or shop online and see the difference for yourself. Now available at Boat Owners. There's one on right there, right there, right there. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Maybe we could double up. There's a piece of wood right there too, Mike. Is there? On the right, see it floating right there? A palm frond or something? And right, the go ahead, pull him back. On the troll here, just got crushed. Yeah, there's something on a long right there. feather. Now, Carlos is gonna stay at the wheel again. This is about working together as a team. He's gonna keep the boat moving forward nice and slowly. Okay, his job up there is to watch these lines. I can handle the, you know, I can handle the cockpit. That's it, it's a team effort. If he leaves that wheel, we can easily risk getting a giant tangle. You know, and I might need him. I might need his help. We'll have to see how it comes together. Get this one up. And again, by keeping the boat moving forward, I've got a nice tight line thanks to him. You know, he's helping me out here. Small little schooly, but hey, we'll take it. That's the whole ticket. Pulling back even more, maybe just leave one in gear. All right. It looks like we're nice and clear. Easy. Can we make it under that? Yep. You know, you can't, you can't decide what the size of the fish are, right, that eat your lures. But you can lean all the odds in your favor and do everything right to make sure that you maximize on every bite. And sometimes it's gonna be a five pounder and sometimes it'll be a 50 pounder or anything in between. But I don't care to me, it's about getting that bite, you know? Catching that fish, doing everything right, staying focused on that spread. There we go. Not a look, I mean, just a little flipper, but man, look at all the grass here. Ready? There we go. Nice. Not a giant fish. Now again, you know, the guy at the wheel has him in gear. I, look, look at all this grass. I just honestly can't believe it. We went from no grass at all to just covered up in grass. But there it is, just on a little feather right there. Small fish, but he's all beat up. Look at his eye right there. Otherwise, I'd release that fish, but that fish isn't going to live. So poor you, you lost an eye. You're going to get back on ice. Let's see if we can get back on the bite. Pro's Tip brought to you by Windrider, the finest foul weather gear for any climate. Just about to switch out here to a different color deep diving plug, but I wanted to talk to you real quick how I have my diving plugs rigged. Real important here for a couple of really big reasons. You can see I've got a short piece of 220 pound Mamoy extra hard leader material. It's only about 30, 36 inches. Crimped to the front of the lure right there. Crimped to a 250 pound Spro power swivel, very small, very strong barrel swivel. That's all that you need right there, okay? Today's swivels are smaller and stronger than they've ever been before. Now on my rod, you can see I do not have a snap swivel. I'm just taking the end of my running line. I've got the lure pre-rigged in the tackle box or in the bag, your drawer, wherever it is that you have it. And I'll just tie that right on there, real simple, without the use. They're just an improved clinch knot, by the way. Tighten that real good. Make sure it's moistened and cinched. But without the use of a snap swivel, I don't need that extra snap. The reason I do that is to keep that entire connection very streamlined. Look at that, really, really streamlined. That's gonna help you avoid 
getting any weed stuck on the swivel, which we know happens to all of us, okay? And also, it's gonna allow this lure to achieve maximum penetration. By having it rigged just like this, you're gonna be able to get that deep diving plug to swim as deep as possible, the way that it was designed to swim. You know, this lure will swim 30 to 40 feet below the surface if it's rigged properly. There's no wire, no cable. I know that I risk getting cut off, but I don't think so. You know, you'll catch kingfish, you'll catch wahoo on this same lure here. And you know what, at the end of the day, if you're a little chafed up, obviously you can re-rig the lure. If you get chafed up during a fishing trip, just pull another one out of the tackle bag that's already rigged and tie that one on and you're good to go. It's a small little difference, but I'll tell you by avoiding the multi-strand cable and by avoiding long six foot leaders, 12 foot leaders, whatever crazy stuff you're thinking about, keep it short, keep it simple, do it right and you'll catch more. Let's get this out. Get hooked up, shop online, and get your hands on the same proven tackle you see on Florida Sport Fishing TV. Our entire selection of technique specific rods, deadly jigs sold rigged and ready to fish, performance apparel, headwear, drinkware, and even vivid life size wall murals to show off your trophy catch. All of this and so much more in stock and ready for immediate delivery. Enter FSF TV at checkout and receive a special gift. What if navigating was as simple as touch and go? It is that simple. The world's first multi-touch MFD chart plotter, Navnet TZ Touch. Florida Sport Fishing TV proudly utilizes and endorses Boat Outfitters, where owners and builders go for replacement parts and hard-to-find hardware. Motor Guide, precise maneuverability equals better fishing. Tropic Trailer, Florida's largest dealer has the right trailer at the right price. Let's go ahead and clear these trolling lines. You know, we came out, wanted to talk to you about work in the cockpit had some action, talked a lot about a lot of different details. I'm hoping you were paying attention. Now though, you guys know I'm crazy about slow pitch jigging. We just got our hands on some new patterns in our slow pitch jigs. Why don't we go ahead and go do a little bit of jig fishing, give you a first look at these lures. They're gonna be hot. You know, we wanted to come in here and test some new colors and give you a first hand look at some of these <laughs> color schemes on our, on our slow pitch jigs. Well, I guess they work. <sighs> Took a long time picking these, I gotta be honest. It was a lot of work, all of our slow pitch jigs. You know, selecting the design, the color, the size. And listen, I'm not a rocket science scientist. You know, I'm not sitting there designing a jig. Very few of us are. But it's really a matter of selection, components, assembly, and putting everything together so this way you end up, the consumer, the fisherman ends up uh, with a package of jigs, a six pack of jigs, that, which is common to what we sell, or a three pack of equipment that's gonna work right out of the package. You know, it's rigged and ready. And these new colors that we just got our hands on, I'm telling you, they came in, these are literally hot off the boat, so to speak. Seriously, hot off the boat and they've been burning a hole in my pocket. So today was just a perfect day to say, hey, you know what? We spent a lot of time working the cockpit, sharing a lot of good info. Let's go do something different. Let's go jig. Let's, let's see if these things work as good as I think that they're going to. Well, something ate it. There he is, whatever it is. I got some color on him. Come on, come on. You win the prize for the very first fish I'm gonna put in the boat on this new color jig. Is that a nice black fin tuna I'm looking at? I don't wanna say that. I don't wanna say that that's a big fat black fin tuna. All right, how about that? 
<laughs> How about that on the first fish on a jig? Nice little butterball blackfin. Let's go ahead and put that in free spool. Oh, he's not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right there. How about that? Thanks, Marita, for an awesome gap. And look. There it is, right there. <laughs> Not what I was expecting, but certainly an absolutely welcome catch. You know, hey, I'll tell you what. I had a ball today, you know, really a lot of fun doing what I like to do best, really educating anglers, talking about different fishing techniques and the different fundamentals that are gonna make you a more successful angler. And then we talked about switching it up, how important that is. And look, this is the result right here. I mean, just making one little change and saying, hey, let's go in the day with a little bit of jig fishing, put a nice quality fish in the boat. And like we said earlier, every fish makes a difference. And one fish could make the whole trip for you. To learn more about the tactics and techniques seen on today's show and to subscribe to Florida Sport Fishing Magazine, visit floridasportfishing.com and get hooked up.